Hey my friends, I'm really excited. I was finally able to get out and shoot. I found a girls fast pitch softball tournament. Say that three times real fast. Whew, that'd be a tongue twister. I was able to get out there and shoot. It took me two hours to get there, but it was well worth it to finally be, get behind you know, the camera and lens and make some great images and just be out there kind of co-mingling with people. You couldn't get real close because of the social distancing, but it was still great. And I figured, you know, if I'm doing this, let's make it really worth it. So I rented a lens that's been on my list. It's in my top five of what I've been wanting to utilize. It's the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter 5.6 to 6.3. It's a variable aperture lens. Great lens to get out there and shoot. I'd seen lots of reviews on this lens. I've read a lot of stuff, but there was one problem with all the reviews, especially the YouTube reviews. Actually, it was all of the reviews, come to think of it. Yeah, there's one problem with all of them. And I'll tell you what that is when I come back. Before I jump into this video, if this is your first time here or you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so you can learn how to make great sports images. The main problem I have with all the reviews I read and all those YouTube fancy videos is one thing, the camera body. With this lens, the camera bodies that were always being used were the Sony a7R IV, for example, $3,000 camera body, or mostly, almost every time I saw it was a Sony A9. And a lot of times it was a Sony sponsored event. So you got Sony A9, like $3,300 for that. Get a Sony sponsored event. So you got all these professionals taking photos of a professional sporting event. That is not real life. For those of you just getting started, you're not gonna be out shooting professional level sports anytime soon. It's going to take a while, if you even want to do that, to be able to work up to that level. So what did I do? Now, wait, let me clarify one thing. Yes, truthfully, granted, you may not be purchasing a $2,000 lens, but if you're going to use your money, the lens is where you want to put it. So what I ended up doing is you guys know me. I took my Sony a6100 camera body, threw this lens on it, and I'll tell you, it was a great combination. It took me a little while to get used to the weight difference, the lens is close to five pounds. I think it's like four and a half or something like that. The camera body, less than a pound. So my first set of photos, say 20 to 30 of them were not as tack sharp as I thought they should be. And it took me a couple of seconds and I went, oh, I think I know what the problem is. It was the weight, the counterbalance. I couldn't get the counterbalance right. So when I take my photos, I was kind of, you know, moving the lens a little bit, which which it happens sometimes, especially when you're just getting used to a new setup. You know, because it has to do with the counterbalance. You got this really light, camera body you know so you're kind of like this and well i think you get the point all right let's take a look at some of the images i took at this tournament let me show you the venue that i was shooting this fast pitch softball tournament at this is wallace marine park it's located in salem oregon it's a great venue to shoot from so what you got here is you walk in this entrance right this way and they were utilizing these three fields when i showed up they generally use all five fields but they had a couple of them closed off you know because of the covid pandemic thing going on and I started right here on this side, so I've got a great angle of the pitcher, first base. You know, if I get a left-handed batter, it works great too. I've got the outfield. I can walk all the way around the fence, unencumbered, nobody bugs me. And back over to this side, where I can shoot this way. Not behind the fence, I'm outside the fence, so I've got plenty of room to get my shot, and nobody bothers me at all. Then I can work my way back around, come back here if I want, and I just make a little couple steps over this way, and I can shoot this ball field get all these great angles and then I can move on around again, get some outfield shots once again, and I can come here and shoot these angles. Now this is the worst part of the field. This is a really strong angle from both sides that we have this set up. Now you've seen the venue I was shooting at and you saw the positioning that I took around this complete venue. It's a great place to shoot. I'll say that again, a great place to shoot. I wish I had access to a few more spots, but because of the pandemic, you may have heard about it. A lot of it was roped off and I didn't have access to that. Just to recap, I'm using the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens. It's a 5.6 to 6.3 lens. So it's good for sunlight, for low light conditions. I wouldn't recommend it, but I had plenty of sunlight falling down from the sky for this venue. Unfortunately, the one problem with the sunlight was it was almost noon, so it was almost straight up. So a lot of the faces would end up being darker. So I did some adjusting with the ISO to kind of compensate for that. And I used this on the Sony a6100. So I had 713 images I took on one battery for three hours. First image here, one one thousandth of a second was the shutter speed, ISO is at 100. So that's gonna give me a nice, clean, clear picture. Next one I'm taking from the outfield. So let me show you this again real fast. I was taking this one from right out in this area right here, probably over here just a little bit on this image. So I was way out there. That's why you have 459 millimeter. And I just have to say, I hardly ever went over 400 millimeters with this lens. 
it was more than enough to get what I needed. Outfield shots, I had to go a little bit tighter. And don't forget, this is a crop sensor lens, so you can multiply that by a factor of 1.5. Yeah, but other than that, I stayed below 400 millimeters for the most part. Next shot, short stop coming in, trying to get the ball, trying to stop it. You can see I'm zooming in a little bit more, so the aperture is up to 6.3. I've got 344 millimeters. I have edited all these images already, and I got a little carried away on a couple of them, over-processed them, maybe just a little bit. You know, that happens sometimes. But I've had to crop some of these in a little bit because the nature of sports photography is like this. You're showing maybe the batter or you're on the, the pitcher and then something happens, you have to move real fast. Sometimes you can't zoom the way you want to, so you gotta crop in and it's okay to crop. It really is. I don't have the lens with me anymore. I had to send it back to the rental company, but let me talk to you about the uh, zoom feature a little bit. The zoom on the lens is internal. So you turn a little wheel like this and then the lens, it's internally zooming. Unlike this lens here, which you have to do this with, or you do it like this. I do and don't like the internal zoom, but we'll leave that discussion for another time. Let's get on to the next image. This was on third base, 280 millimeter. It's a great shot. You got the dust and the dirt flying up. This right here, just your basic image. What I do like about it, the offensive player going from first to second is out of focus. Defensive player who's fielding the ball is in focus. Now, when I set this system up, I was using different types of focus systems and I finally decided to use a wide area of focus on the Sony a6100. The reason I did that is because a lot of people just getting started. It'd be a good place for them to set their focus point so they can kind of get a feel for the camera. And when you're shooting softball, baseball, there's plenty of distance between the players most of the time at the camera and the lens combination. It, it, it locked on so fast. I was really impressed by how fast that worked. This image I took just to show you, I was on third base line. Let me show you the field I was on one more time. On this one, I was right here, third base, shooting this way. 600 millimeter, just to show you how close that is. Not even crop. This is exactly how tight it was at 600 millimeters. No crop on this one, and that's all you can fit in the frame when you're at 600 millimeters. Now the outfield shot, this one, just to check things out, 600 millimeters zoomed all the way in, got the player nicely focused. What I don't like about this image is the background. There's somebody in the back and you got the little women's bathroom sign. I don't like that. Always pay attention to your backgrounds when you're taking images. Last image to show you guys, this is of the picture. I really like how clean and crisp this photo is. You zoom in a little bit here. There we go. There we go. As you can see, it's it's slightly over-processed. I got a little carried away messing around, but it's nice and crisp and clear. Overall, I was very happy with this lens camera body combination. If you're just getting started, it might be something to think about. However, the lens, $2,000, a little pricey, but it's a Sony lens. And we know Sony, they're a little pricey when it comes to lenses. The camera body, about $750, which is pretty good when you're just getting started. Would I purchase this myself if I was just getting into sports photography? Probably not. I would think about it, but probably not. I think there are some other camera lenses out there. And the best thing about this lens camera combination, it was fun. I had a great time out there shooting, finally after all these months of not having anything to shoot, but it felt really good in the hands once I got used to the weight of the lens itself. Five pounds, like I told you earlier. Took a little while to get used to that, you know, kind of offsetting, counterbalancing myself so I could get really sharp images, but it was just a fun setup to use. Now it's your chance to let me know what you think about this lens camera combination. Is it something you would think about or is it something you would throw aside and pick up something else instead? Let me know in the comments. If you're new to sports photography and you're trying to figure out how to gain access, well, check out this video here. I talk about how to get a press pass or since football is just, just around the corner and you're trying to figure out how to make more dynamic images, well, check out this video here. I answer that question as well. One main thing you need to keep in mind is the only way you are going to get better is if you grab your camera, find a sporting event, find anything that's going on that's action related and get out and shoot. 